Hey everyone, Justin here, and getting started with French Bulldog breeding can be an overwhelming task, and of course it shouldn't be taken lightly. But if you're looking to get started, here's five great tips for new breeders. Tip number one, learn the genetics and know how they relate to your dog. Any dog that you intend on breeding should of course be DNA tested for health, but if you're looking to produce a certain look or color, you need to be familiar with concepts such as dominant and recessive genes so you understand the value of the stud or dam you're considering. We have a few great videos on that, so check out our channel for more. If you're looking, for instance, to pay an inflated price on an Isabella carrier, you may find that the odds of producing one could be less than 2%, so by knowing how these genes work, you can avoid using poorly suited studs and avoid being taken advantage of by other breeders. Which brings us to tip number two, beware of other breeders. And that's not to say they're all bad because it's certainly not the case. There are several good people out there that are extremely generous with their time and are more than willing to mentor new breeders. But there are just as many out there that will mislead you in order to make a sale. And when a problem arises, they will not act in good faith to help resolve it. They will all tell you they are the best and no other breeder can produce what they can. Do not get caught up in the hype. I've seen genetics misrepresented. I've seen new breeders told that their dog will produce a color or a trait that it can't. I've also spoken with experienced breeders that pretend to understand the topic, but are completely clueless on how genetics come together. Contracts can also be a good indicator on what you're going to be dealing with. If they're only willing to provide a one-sided contract where you're liable for all of the risk and they want you to pay their legal bills in the event of a dispute, it's a good indicator that this breeder may not have your best interests at heart. You need to make sure you're educating yourself and that you can communicate effectively with these various personality types. Tip number three, understand the financial commitment. Breeding French Bulldogs requires a significant investment and requires a fair amount of capital with a substantial risk. Depending on what you want your breeding program to look like, oftentimes people start out with a female that could cost between six and 15,000 or even more in some cases with breeding rates. Your stud fee for each breeding will run between two and $7,000 on average, and you'll need to wait about a year and a half before breeding a female. At the end of the pregnancy, you can expect several thousand dollars for a C-section. You will have additional vet fees, home equipment, damage to your home from puppies, vaccination, food, and all of this can really add up. And in the event your female doesn't take, you'll lose money on testing and vet fees and most likely have some money tied up with a stud owner and may have some additional costs at the next heat cycle. The litter size may also not shape up large enough for you to recover your costs. All of this doom and gloom is not to say it can't be a profitable endeavor, however it does come with a significant amount of risk and this is not the type of business you should be betting your family house on. Tip number four, do not underestimate the need for human intervention with this breed. French Bulldog breedings would rarely occur if it was left up to chance. Human intervention will be needed for the insemination process and also at the end of the pregnancy for a C-section. There is a significant risk if you don't recognize the signs of labor in time, if a C-section occurs too early, there's a risk to the pups, and if it occurs too late, there is a risk to both the pups and mum. The pups will also need to be monitored in the weeks after as they can wander away from mum, which is their primary heat source, and they can succumb to hypothermia. And before we get to tip number five, if you could please make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and enable notifications so you don't miss any of the great videos we've got coming for you, it would really help us out and hopefully you as well. Tip number five, progesterone test. Progesterone testing identifies the correct timing for an insemination to take place in order to maximize the chance of a pregnancy. Many stud contracts specify this as a requirement and if a pregnancy does not occur, you may be out the stud fee if you cannot prove progesterone testing took place. In addition, you should find a good reputable vet that specializes in reproduction. They may offer a package for multiple testing and you may need to be prepared to have five or more tests done to detect ovulation. You can also test progesterone at the end of a pregnancy to identify the best time for a C-section. Avoid using at-home progesterone test kits at least until you have a few litters established and you're in a better position to evaluate if it's the right choice for you. And we've also got a bonus tip for you, number six, Book your studs in advance and have a backup in mind. If you wait until the last minute, most breeders will know you're running out of time and any chance you had of getting a lower stud fee has gone out the window. You'll be required to place about a 15 to 20% deposit down in advance to secure your spot and the rest will be due at the date of insemination. You could extend this advice to encompass multiple aspects of your breeding. Make sure you have a plan, 
Our litters almost exclusively seem to arrive on weekends, and if your plan doesn't include a vet that's available anytime you need them, you might be setting yourself up for disaster. So if you've heard any other great tips, please leave them here for other breeders to read, and check out the channel for more great videos, and we will see you real soon.